My story started when I was 11 and was introduced to a single kiss in a scholastic book. I didn't understand why I liked it. This was the start of my porn addiction journey. Sheer Jan. No, your ears are not deceiving you, my friend. She just blamed scholastic books for her porn addiction because of a picture that she saw of two people kissing in one of the books that they published. Now, this testimony took place during a board of trustees meeting in the Conroe School District in Texas, and she is there basically to pitch a ban on all scholastic books for schools in this district. Now, in case you're wondering, because I'm sure you are, this is the picture that she is referring to that is responsible for her porn addiction. Yeah, I'm sure that looking at it just gets you all hot and bothered. But, um, you know, first of all, I just got to say, I am a little bit thankful that she's at least not blaming gay or trans people for her porn addiction. This one is all on you straight people. But it is odd to me that she's blaming scholastic books, all of them in particular, because kissing is being portrayed. I mean, kissing is something that is portrayed everywhere. It's unavoidable. But as you'll soon learn, there's a very specific reason why she's blaming scholastic books. And she's probably lying or at a minimum, if we're being really charitable here, embellishing when it comes to this story. But nevertheless, there is more and uh, we're going to hear it. So specifically, this is what happened after she saw that kiss. I was then very curious and began exploring and it only got worse. I looked for other books that gave me pleasure, and it led to internet searches that I will never forget. I was addicted every night, and it was something I immediately regretted and eventually became depressed about. When I was 13 years old, I told my mom I wanted to die. My battle with porn addiction ended seven years ago, and I've never told this story to the public. I didn't even tell my mom until I was 18 years old. I'm only telling you this today because there are way too many stories which are much worse. I don't want Conroe ISD students to repeat what I went through because they accidentally ran upon a scholastic book or another book that could lead them down this road, which drama is one of them. This isn't about banning books. This is about sexual obscenity. I wasn't exposed to this level of sexual material, but I was already captured by a single kiss. Getting rid of scholastic books and their book fairs will inevitably protect kids, but it's your decision. What do you want to do? What, where do you want history to go down? Do you want kids to be exposed to this kind of material? Because I was, and I don't want any other kids to. It's not about banning books, I promise you that. It's about protecting the children. Now, if she actually struggled with a porn addiction and it caused that much mental health problems, I feel bad for her, genuinely so. But you'll have to forgive me for doubting the sincerity of her claim here, given the conflict of interest that she failed to mention. That's right, because investigative journalist Judd Legum discovered that that woman, Lena Burkhardt, is actually the public relations coordinator at Brave Books, a conservative competitor to Scholastic Books. Legum explains, Brave Books offers a slew of children's books with conservative messaging written by right-wing influencers and politicians. Authors on Brave Books' website include actor Kevin Sorbo, United States Representative Dan Crenshaw, Donald Trump's former press secretary Sean Spicer, and Trump's former national security advisor Michael Flynn. But wait, there's more. Brave Books also published stochastic terrorist Chaya Raichik's children's book, white supremacist Jack Posobiec's children's book, and a book by conservative influencer Ashley St. Clair, which is described as the conservative response to gender identity. So she works for a conservative alternative to scholastic books, and Brave Books, her employer, along with their affiliate Skytree book fairs, have gone out of their way to lie and defame scholastic books. They've accused them of publishing graphic content and Legab also uncovered that the website stopscholastic.com redirects people to Skytree book fairs where it condemns Scholastic for publishing LGBTQ plus books and it's not a coincidence that Brave Books and Skytree book fair also shared her appearance in order to further demonstrate how harmful Scholastic books are so they can push them as an alternative. In other words, that woman 
is a plant for a conservative company who is lobbying school boards to replace scholastic books with their conservative alternatives. But regardless, it actually worked. Legum reports, Burkhardt's gambit has already had an impact. The Conrail School Board, after listening to her story, voted to restrict access to drama, the scholastic book featuring a kiss from all students in the eighth grade and below. One of the school board members, Melissa Dungan, suggested replacing scholastic with Skytree book fairs. All glory to God, Burkhart posted in response to the news. But of course, Lena made sure to delete that response after she was exposed. So they're all doing this out in the open. But if you're going to make claims in service of your political, or in this case, business agenda, wouldn't you at least try to tone it down a little bit to make it more believable? I mean, if her claim wasn't so goddamn outrageous, nobody probably would have even bothered to look into it. But conservatives can't help themselves, right? They don't just lie compulsively. They do it in the most insane, hyperbolic way imaginable. But somehow, that is not the most outrageous claim during a public testimony that we're going to be looking at in this video. That award actually goes to this woman. Hello, my name is Erin Mazzoni, and my address is on file. I just moved here from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Hearing what this person just said really upsets me because our entire community up north fell apart. It was like watching a bad car accident for three years straight. It started out as pride coming in, and I thought everything would be okay. I was totally fine with them having and doing what they wanted under the laws. And it ended with a rainbow room where eight to 12 year old kids were given butt plugs and dildos and trained. They just got a city grant for $650,000 to be able to do more training on the children. Just give her the Oscar already. She's earned it. So I just have to restate here what she said, because I know you're probably questioning whether or not you heard her correctly. And you did. But just so we're clear here. She is alleging that the Rainbow Room, an LGBTQ plus youth organization, gave 8 to 12 year olds dildos and butt plugs because they just hand those out for free, I guess, especially to children. And of course, there's no evidence for this claim. And Phil Williams, chief investigative reporter for News Channel 5 in Tennessee, explains that the Bucks County Rainbow Room, quote, is an LGBTQIA plus youth program that provides a supportive and empowering environment for youth ages 14 to 21 located at a progressive church. Now, yes, sex education is one of the services that they provide, but as Pink News points out, there's zero evidence of butt plugs. And this person responded to the viral video writing, I actually work in Bucks County, and this is the first time hearing about free butt plugs and dildos. Maybe she's so upset because she didn't get in line early enough to claim hers. I mean, it's entirely possible, right? Now, I actually feel a little bit foolish because I actually didn't think it was possible for conservatives to concoct a more idiotic lie about kids in schools than the whole kids are identifying as cats and shitting in litter boxes at school smith but here we are i think this one takes the cake now i'm sure that you'll also not be surprised to learn that this woman is also a political operative phil williams reports that she's been identified as the campaign manager of franklin tennessee mayoral candidate gabrielle hansen who went viral herself after refusing to apologize for inviting nazis to her candidate forum now conservatives watching this will inevitably say mike you leftoids think that everyone you disagree with is a nazi but let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth LGBTQ Nation reports in a Telegram post earlier this year, Brad Lewis, a self-described friend of Hansen's and a leader of the white supremacist group, Tennessee Active Club, that accompanied her to the event, proudly claimed, quote, I'm not a conservative. I'm an actual literal Nazi. And this is what Hansen said about them, quote, I'm not going to denounce anybody their right to be whatever it is that they want to be, whether I agree with what they do in their personal life or not. Hansen said of the self-proclaimed white supremacist she invited to the event to provide security. So they are pretty clear. Now, for some additional context, here's a report from Phil Williams again, who was at the event in question. Someone said you were here making a statement. I don't know what that statement is. No, we're not uh, making a that. statement. We're here we're for uh, Gabrielle Hansen's statement. You are? Yeah. Okay. White supremacists so protecting a, a candidate who has made fighting LGBTQ pride events a focus of her campaign for mayor. Some were not too eager for their identities to be known. We're just making sure everything goes well. Okay, and are you concerned about things not going well? It's a possibility and we're just here to protect Gabrielle. You're here to protect her? Yes. 
I hear you're all here for Gabrielle. Yes, yes sir. So, so what, what, what's the purpose? Uh, we're just here to show her some support, that's all. The man on the left is Sean Kaufman, who has been described by the Stop Anti-Semitism watchdog group as, quote, a disturbed neo-Nazi and Holocaust denier with a documented history of violence and a massive cache of firearms. A video posted online shows Kaufman and other extremists earlier this year outside a nonprofit group's drag show fundraiser. There's Kaufman giving a Nazi salute. He also showed up at a Chattanooga drag show last year with other extremists. In 2020, Kaufman was arrested for disorderly conduct at a Black Lives Matter protest. Gabrielle's a friend of mine, and uh, she's had some credible threats against her. So, uh, well, uh, I'm just. Uh, Posted up out here. Okay. Show her some support. Then yeah. there's Brad Lewis. He's the operator of the Lewis Country Store on the far west side of Nashville, a store known for its extreme right wing messaging. When the store recently went on the market, Gabrielle Hansen was the real estate agent who got the listing. A recent investigation by the Southern Poverty Law Center revealed how the second floor of the store was being used as a white nationalist fight club. Yeah. So just to recap, the crying butt plug lady is the campaign manager of a Republican with direct ties to neo-Nazis, or I should say was her campaign manager because Gabrielle Hansen lost, thankfully. But this lie about butt plugs and dildos is completely unsurprising because Nazis will say anything to justify their harassment and terrorizing of queer people. But on the subject of dildos, which is a segue that I never thought that I would see on this show, there's a passage from a novel that is highly contentious in conservative circles, and I'm going to let Louisiana Senator John Kennedy read it for us. I got a new strap-on strap harness today. I can't wait to put it on you. It will fit my favorite dildo perfectly. You're going to look so hot. I can't wait to have your cock in my mouth. I'm going to give you the blowjob of your life. Then I want you inside of me. I love how the eye contact at the end there just really conveys the character's passion. I think you really sold it. Now, yes, the book Gender Queer is recommended for mature teens and adults, and its inclusion at some school libraries has been contested by conservatives, one of them being this woman. Meet Massachusetts Secretary of State candidate Rayla Campbell. She is a Republican, and as LGBTQ Nation explains, Campbell has a history of making outlandish claims about Massachusetts' public education system. At the state GOP party convention in May, she asserted with no evidence that fifth graders were being encouraged to perform sex acts on each other. She also attacked genderqueer. Quote, this is not sexual education. This is child porn and sex trafficking. This book is being pushed out in our public schools, Campbell said of Maya Kobabi's illustrated memoir. Now, first of all, to say that this book is being pushed suggests that it's part of school curriculums, when there is zero evidence that it is part of any school's curriculum around the country. Second of all, Saying that the book is porn is one thing, but saying that it's CP is something entirely different. That means that anyone who owns a copy of Genderqueer is in possession, technically, by her logic, of CP, which is a crime. Now, during her appearance at a Back the Blue rally back in August, she brought a copy of what she calls CP with her, presumably to show fellow Back the Blue bootlickers how bad it is in an effort to gin up support for a ban or something. But after claiming the book that she had on her person contained CP, well... An anonymous person reported her to the police for, you guessed it, possibly possessing CP, where she then had to presumably prove to an officer that the book didn't actually contain CP and that she didn't have CP on her. Here's a clip from the incident. By the people she backs. Back the blue, right? Rayla Campbell? Come on! Don't resist, Rayla! <laughs> See, this is why it's so important that we are factual with the claims that we make. Now, look, she has the right to advocate against this book if she thinks it's inappropriate, fine. But rather than just being truthful, she decided to lie about the book. And that lie came back to bite her in the ass because she was humiliated and liberals filmed her and taunted her as she was being talked to by the police. 
Jesus Christ. Now, I've got one more for you because uh, some conservatives, they don't bother to cloak their agenda in hyperbole or lies. They just cut to the chase. So uh, we're going to hear from an Oklahoma State Board Education public commenter. And uh, this woman is just going to admit she wants to kill gay people. Full stop. Instead of listening to what I misspoke last at the last meeting, I want to make a clarification. So let's just hear it straight from him. If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. Oh, lovely. I tore it. Okay, well. Sorry. I was a little exuberant. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since they may, since what may be known about God is plain to them because, because God has made it plain to them. Do not be deceived, neither the sexual, sexual immor, sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. All of that was to clarify what God actually said uh, and to remind all of us that this destructive lifestyle is not uh, natural. Great passage, but here's my favorite one from Leviticus. 1919 says, you must obey all my decrees. Do not mate two different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two different kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven from two different kinds of thread. Now, I can't see the pants that she's wearing, but I'm assuming that it is a different fabric from her shirt. In other words, we're both going to hell, Karen. I'll see you there. Now, you're probably wondering who this is. Is she a political operative or a business insider? And actually, this one might surprise you the most. That's my auntie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's seemingly a random Karen, but in conclusion, yes, these conservatives are lying. But some of them might be dumb enough to believe their own bullshit, which is why it's hard to really say definitively that they're lying, because some of them might just be drunk on their own Kool-Aid. And I say this especially because a lot of conservatives are becoming more and more delusional, right? Because as they grow more detached from reality, their perspectives are going to shift further and further from the rest of us. And if that's the case, then we're going to see this trend continue. It's a product of radicalization. But as they resort to exaggeration and lies and outright defamation at times, it's more important than ever that we all remain committed to the truth ourselves. Because hyperbolic lies might persuade some Americans momentarily, or at least get their attention, but remaining committed to the truth is how you build long-term credibility and permanently change hearts and minds, which is the point if you're interested in politics. So I'll stick to that, and these morons can keep floundering with nonsensical bullshit. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. 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 Play stupid games, around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, game, Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.